Coming up on this week's episode of Theme Park Worldwide, the show, I'm going to be talking to you about Ferrari Land at Port Ventura and sharing even more details on this brand new theme park. Along with that, I've been talking about a brand new ride coming to Thomas Land at Drayton Manor, two new family attractions coming to CBeebies Land at Alton Towers, and some sad news from Pleasurewood Hills as they announced the closure of one of their most iconic roller coasters. I'm Sean Sandbrook, this is Theme Park Worldwide, the show, and that means it's time to cue those titles. Everyone, welcome to this week's episode of the show, where finally we can pick January up, chuck it to one side, and look forward to the brand new theme park season, especially here in the UK. Uh, of course, it's February half term next week. We've got Blackpool Pleasure Beach opening, Portland's Park, Drayton Manor, lots and lots of different attractions all throughout the UK start with February half term. The main one for us, of course, is Blackpool, where we're going to be down there next weekend from the Friday through to the Sunday. On the Friday, we're going to check out some of the Merlin attractions, do a little vlog walking around, go Coral Island, that sort of thing and then on the Saturday we'll be at Blackpool Pleasure Beach for the opening day February the 11th so I can't wait to of course share live updates over the weekend uh, there'll be live updates both on the Saturday and the Sunday from the Pleasure Beach we'll be checking out the construction on the brand new Matt Mega Coaster seeing what other improvements of changes have happened at the Pleasure Beach over winter and of course it's genuinely the first time in the UK we can say here we go 2017 is here and get on some massive rides again so it's going to be great I love Pleasure Beach I love getting down there at the start of the season there's going to be so many people that we know out there as well so make sure if you do see us make sure you say hi there's gonna be lots and lots of other theme park channels there as well so we can't wait to see those guys see all of our friends basically this is a good way to start 2017 and bring it all in so get yourselves over onto twitter facebook and instagram for theme park worldwide uh, drop us a like or a follow so you can see all our live updates and of course we'll have some vlogs when we come back there'll actually be three vlogs from that weekend there'll be the one on the friday from doing all the different attractions throughout blackpool and just generally having to catch up with people which will be nice uh, and then of course the saturday from blackpool pleasure beach and we'll have a second vlog uh, where we're having a look uh, from the pleasure beach where we're going to have a look at the construction on the brand new ride much like i have done with secret weapon 8 at alton towers i think it deserves its own vlog series so to speak where we're going to follow construction 2018 so make sure you check that out throughout this year we're going to be there very regularly this year to do live updates and of course film vlogs and obviously we'll be uh, visiting up until 2018 when the new ride opens as well so make sure you stay tuned to social media and our youtube channel throughout the year it's a big year for the uk industry next year and we're going to be following it all throughout 2017 getting that build up of the attractions and then bam 2018 hits it's going to be crazy for the UK. So much to see, so much to do. A GCI at Alton Towers and a Matt Mega Coaster at Blackpool. Very, very exciting. I just can't wait. In terms of other videos on the channel, all the Florida vlogs are now online from me and Harry's trip, so make sure you check them out. The couple of the most recent ones, the last ones we put online, was Hollywood Studios from Walt Disney World and our vlog from Universal Orlando Resort. So make sure you check those out. They're the newest ones to go online. Uh, we'll have a few more on and off ride POVs throughout the week. Another vlog will come online from when we went to Nottingham the other night where we went to do the adventure golf course the lost city we have done a vlog from there before but me alex and martin went back for another visit uh, which is really cool and we also went to planet bounce which is a trampoline park i mean i'm not very daring at these trampoline parks you won't see me flipping upside down doing somersaults and that kind of stuff but we went there and we had a really good time so make sure you check out the vlog just under half an hour long uh, and it's well worth seeing once that goes online on the channel uh, in the next couple of days as well Okay, quite a bit to get through there in terms of news this week, so it's now time for a little bit of news off the rails. Now, one of the biggest projects opening in Europe this year is, of course, Ferrari Land at Port Aventura World. Now, last year, Port Aventura went through quite a big rebrand to Port Aventura World. And, of course, that was to push out the fact they've got three fantastic attractions all at one resort. Of course, you've got the main park itself, which is the highlight for me there. You've got all your big attractions there, such as Shambhala, Furious Baco, Hurricane Condor, Dragon Con. So much in that park, so many shows, so much good theming. And that's the main reason you go to Port Aventura. Now, 
next door, they've got the water park, which I was never a massive fan of until a few years back when they had a massive expansion. And to be honest, as much as the expansion doesn't look great from outside, I mean, you go in the far west area and you can see the big water slides and it's not themed in at all. It doesn't look great. But once you're actually in the water park, it's really good and it actually fits really well. That water park now is a massive full day out in my opinion. You can go there on a really nice day uh, and enjoy yourself in that water park. And now the fact they're building Ferrari Land, that third park, Port Ventura really is a world of experiences. I think that's really why they changed the name to Port Ventura World and it just fits with what they wanted to go with in the future. Uh, so it's really good. However, uh, I tried to book my tickets for Ferrari Land online. They actually went on yesterday tickets and I'll talk about prices in a second. Uh, but I tried to book my tickets and I found it the most confusing thing ever. I mean, I'm quite good with booking tickets and getting deals and that kind of thing. And with the amount of travelling I do, you, you've got to be real. I'm always on the ball and trying to get cheap deals and that sort of thing and just genuinely navigate websites to book tickets. I tried to book and, and see what I needed to book and it was the most... One of the most hardest things I've ever done, to be honest, in terms of getting theme park tickets. You go on there and they've got like a calendar and it shows you what tickets are available and that kind of thing. And then you try to book it and they had loads of problems booking it. And in general, it wasn't great. So I hope the actual theme park experience is going to be better than that. Uh, of course, I know Port Ventura is better than the online booking ticket system. Uh, but yeah, hopefully that's something what you can get your head around if you are going. But anyway, I managed to work out in the end that you can't just buy a ticket for Ferrari Land. You need to have a ticket for Ferrari Land and Port Ventura itself a combination ticket for one adult for one day that is 60 euros which is quite pricey to be honest with the current exchange rate what's that 53 54 british pounds so you know it's quite a a considerable amount of money that's just a little bit more than it is to get in Alton Towers for the day and I know you're getting a lot more quality and a lot more rides at Port Ventura for your money than you are at Alton Towers uh, but still I think that's quite a lot of money compared to a, a, a park hopper ticket for there normally uh, for the water park and Port Ventura Park itself uh, it was like 100 quid and you can go in for two weeks so yeah, it's quite expensive really just for the one day. You also need to pick a time slot to go in. So you can only visit once at the moment uh, with, with your time slot. I mean, that's something that will probably change in the future. But with them expecting to be busy, there's two time slots. So there's one at 10 o'clock and there's one a bit later. For the first couple of weeks, though, there is just the one 10 a.m. in the morning time slot and you go in for that full day. But we'll leave the other one something like 6 o'clock and it means you can experience from 6 till, I'd probably say, 10 or 11 o'clock at night uh, inside that park. So I assume they'll kick everybody out and then... That your next ticket slot goes in really and um, how that's going to work I'm not too sure but I'm sure we'll find out later in the year I'm sure lots of other you guys are going to go out there and try the coaster uh, in terms of the ride though of course it has got Europe's tallest and fastest roller coaster the Intamin Accelerator uh, we've got some simulators in there like some go-karts some shot towers it genuinely looks really, really nice. Will it be a full day out in there? For our first time going, it probably will. But if you're going back again, I don't think it'll be a full day out, Jobby. Uh, but I'm looking forward to getting there and just seeing what it's like. I mean, that coast looks awesome. It uses the new Intamin style track, which looks great. So I can't wait to get on that and, and give it a go. It's got lap bars. It's pretty much the European version of Top Thrill Dragster from Cedar Point. So I'm looking forward to getting on that. And of course, it's not anywhere near as tall, but it's, you know, it's not bad. It's good for Europe. I'm looking forward to, to getting on that, really. Uh, but yeah, 60 euro for one day entry. Not amazing prices really, uh, but I believe it's 35 euros if you're an annual pass holder for entry. And it's also 35 euros if you're staying in one of their on-site hotels, which we're not unfortunately on this trip. Uh, as you'll see in the vlog, we're staying local in Salou in a, a cheap hotel, but just as nice in terms of quality. It looks really nice. I'm looking forward to staying there. Uh, but yeah, for Ireland, I mean, can't wait to get in there. Share your comments down below. I know there's been quite a lot of controversy on this new area, whether it should have been built or the money should have been spent on another coaster in, in Port Ventura itself. Who knows, but I'm under the impression really that Port Ventura are really trying to eat into what uh, Europa Park and Disneyland Paris have done over the past few years. And that's really branch out the resort side of things and, and push the fact they've got multiple parks on one property. So we'll see what happens. Ferrari Land at Port Ventura. Make sure you follow our social media challenge uh, just for, for live updates from there, really. And of course, uh, the fact we're going to have our YouTube video uh, when we come back, our vlog from the park, uh, from Port Ventura and Ferrari Land as well. And of course, we'll take you on as many of the rides as we can do. Of course, we don't know what the situation is with filming and things in the park yet with the being a new park uh, but we'll soon find out i'm looking forward to getting there and bringing it to you guys here on theme park worldwide 
A little bit of sad news then to come down from that really good news from Port Ventura, and that is from Pleasurewood Hills. Uh, and this is about the Rattlesnake, which is a roller coaster that has now closed. I mean, it shut last year uh, because the park said they were having issues with, with parts, being able to fix it. This is actually, it used to be known as the Ladybird Coaster. It opened in 1986, making it over 30 years old. A uh, fantastic achievement for the park. A, a really good, firm family coaster. And I mean, I know a lot of people went there, uh, locals from Lowestoft and Great Yarmouth, that sort of area, all went there as kids and absolutely loved that coaster. I went to the park for my first time a few years ago and I really enjoyed going to Playwood Hill. It's a shame having to lose this ride, but they have looked to try and get parts for it. At the end of the day, it's a really old coaster. Unfortunately, they've not managed to get the parts for it, so it's currently in bits. It's been taken down, it has been removed, and in a statement, uh, the park have confirmed that the coaster is to be decommissioned uh, and the fiberglass model of the snake itself uh, is going to be auctioned off to raise money for a local charity, the East Anglian Children's Hospice. So make sure you check that out. Uh, an eBay auction for a fantastic cause there. Uh, so I'm sure a lot of people are going to be bidding on that. Will I be? I'm sure a lot of you are probably thinking, with the amount of stuff we've got here at the World of Theme Parks, I've pretty much hit capacity and get an actual shell from a coaster. I just don't think I've got the room for it, to be honest. Bear in mind, the World of Theme Parks is inside here and outside with the bookworm and things. There's a lot here at the World of Theme Parks, so I doubt I've got the space, uh, but make sure you get a bidding on there. Of course, you get the item, but mainly you're supporting a really good local cause down there in Lowestoft. So, yeah, it's a shame, but the ride was closed refurbishment last year. The work was unable to happen, but they have said there'll be an announcement later this year this year on a replacement coming to uh, the Rattlesnake. So we'll see what happens and I think we'll have a trip down to Pleasurewood uh, Hills this year. I liked it there. It was a nice park uh, and I'm sure we'll go back again and see when it's a little bit busier, a little bit more atmosphere and do a vlog for the channel. Moving on then to a couple of other new additions. I spoke about these already in brief, but I want to give you a bit more details on the two big family areas in the UK, which is Thomas Land at Drayton Manor and CBB's Land at Alton Towers. They've both been in a bit of competition the past few years. Of course, Thomas Land was sort of the prototype family area for the UK, really. The first sort of IP-based area. Drayton Manor went out there. They did an amazing job. And then you had Nickelodeon Land, Come, Angry Birds, all that kind of stuff. And of course, CBB's Land, which came to Alton Towers in 2000. 2014. So Drayton Manor started it off years ago and in my opinion Thomas Land is still the best out of them all. Uh, however we've got expansions coming to both this year so I'll start off with Thomas Land. We've got James and the Red Balloon, a brand new ride which will open on Saturday the 1st of April 2017. This is going to be a new flat ride located just to the left. So say you're going in you see the station in front of you just round to the left past Troublesome Trucks on that new area that opened a couple of years back. It's a new flat ride going in just there. Uh, James and the Red Balloon. So it's basically going to be a balloon ride, spinning flat ride. So we'll go to Drayton Manor this year, check that out, go on for the ride and uh, see what that's like. I mean, like I say, Thomas Land, it's got over 20 attractions in there now in terms of rides, walkthroughs, all that kind of stuff. I love Thomas. I'm such a big kid at heart. Uh, I'm sure you can tell from the videos, to be honest, that I am. Uh, but yeah, it's great to go to Thomas Land and see it all. And it's brilliant for the kids. If I was a little kid and I got to the Thomas Land, I'd be like, oh my God. So yeah, make sure you go and uh, take all your kids out to Thomas Land this year and check it out. Of course, to sort of rival that, uh, you've got CBB's Land at Alton Towers, which are unveiling two new attractions. One of those is a spinning flat ride, similar to Jeremy Jets, which is already located there. It's pretty much that. However, it's been done by a bit of a different manufacturer, uh, this one. So I'm looking forward to seeing how it works. Uh, in terms of the ride, it's now built on site. We believe it's been testing. Uh, so I can't wait to get in there and sort of see that in March. Again, CBB's Land has been the sort of saviour point for Alton Towers over the past few years. They've had a, a couple of bad years at the park. So it's really saved them, CBB's Land, with everything that went on. On over the past few years. Uh, so I'm looking forward to getting in there and seeing the Go Jetters of Roomster Zoom Ride. There we go. I managed to say it. <laughs> uh, the Roomster Zoom Ride. There we go. And the Fur Chester Hotel Live Show, which is going to be a walkthrough attraction, much like Mr. Bloom's allotment that's already in CBB's Land. So interesting to see this new area, so to speak, within CBB's Land. It's going to be located between Tree Fruit Tom's Training Camp, which is basically the something in the dung heap, uh, which got ripped out and replaced with that. Uh, and it's also between the the big fun showtime area so if you walk out of big fun showtime the big covered stage area around the back just there is where you've got the new flat ride and the Fort Chester Hotel so very interesting to see I mean these big family areas are really taking off in the UK and we'll see what happens really I mean they're both in pretty much direct competition they're both in Staffordshire they've both got quite a lot of attractions within them now uh, so yeah let's see what happens for 2017 a bit of a quieter year on the thrills in the UK this year uh, but I'm sure that'll more for make up for it in 2018 it's now time for a little bit of Merch Paradise <laughs> Time for a 
another Merch Paradise. This week I'm going to show you something what quite a few of you might have already seen already, uh, but I've managed to clean it up now and do a bit of work to it. And here he is, he's from the flume in Alton Towers. He's one of the ducks that actually used to sit on the signs as you walked up the queue line. Uh, so there you go, I actually used to screw in just like that. Uh, and then you can see him just at the top. Unfortunately, he's got a little bit of damage to his wing at the side just there. And this is actually really, really heavy. So if you're wondering why I nearly dropped it then, that's why it's quite heavy, this. It's made of like a proper, it's not like um, fiberglass. It's proper like, I don't know, concrete, I'd say, that sort of material. But yeah, there you go. It's a duck from the flume. I thought I needed some sort of souvenir. Uh, some of you might have already seen it, but I've managed to get it all cleaned up now. And it looks quite nice, actually. So I don't think I'm going to restore it. I wanted to keep it just as it was, really, when I got given it by the park. But uh, yeah, quite quack and rest in peace to the flume at Alton Towers really. Yeah, I'll keep him safe here at the Wall of Theme Parks. What's that? No, you can't come to Tokyo Disney Sea with me and Alex. Oh dear. Questions, questions, questions everywhere. I can't believe it. he's absolutely quackers, isn't he? Uh, so it's now time for Ask Me Anything. Sorry about the bad puns, I'm nearly as bad as Alex Crump. Uh, but it's time for the questions this week. Four different questions that you guys have sent in. And Charlotte, the wonderful and beautiful theme park worldwide admin, has picked out the four questions this week uh, for me to read out. So this one's coming from Tim. Hi, Tim, who has asked, What project am I most excited for? Secret Weapon 8 at Alton Towers or the Map Mega Coaster at Blackpool Pleasure Beach? It's a tough one. I mean, Alton Towers is my home park. It's the one that I grew up with. It's the one that made me start Theme Park Worldwide. You know, it's my local park and I wanted to follow it and share updates. Uh, but yeah, I would, uh, it's tough. I love map coasters. Uh, I enjoy Blackpool a lot now. Blackpool's ended up being my favourite park in the UK. It used to be Alton Towers, and I think after how things have been over the past few years, it's gradually have swayed towards Blackpool, hence why I'm wearing a Pleasure Beach uh, hoodie just there. Uh, but yeah, I think, to be honest, the Map Mega Coaster is going to be the, the better of the two, but I can't wait to get on the GCI. I do think it's going to be more of a family coaster coming to Alton Towers. I wouldn't get your hopes up and think it's going to be a thrill coaster. Uh, however, it might have a thrilling theme. I mean, Alton Towers have got sort of 13, which is a family coaster, but it's got that quite dark theme. And if any of you remember back in 2010 when it opened, God, seven years ago, uh, the, the adverts for the ride of this girl being wrapped up with vines and that kind of thing, it was quite scary. It was quite a dark theme for a family coaster. And the marketing manager at the time uh, didn't do the best of jobs, we all thought, in the enthusiast community. I mean, she, she was just marketing it to be this massive thrill coaster, and it really wasn't, because 13's a family ride, but now it's not being marketed to be a thrill coaster. 13, I love it, it's one of my favourite coasters in the country now. I think it's a really good, firm family coaster, uh, manufactured by Intamin. It's got that free fall drop section. It's just a really nice ride with some good theming. But I just don't want to make them a mistake with this one, really. I mean, what's it going to be themed to? Is it going to be themed to Katanga Canyon, Mutiny Bay, maybe even Gloomy Wood? Who knows? It looks like it, it could have more of a darker theme going to it, so they could potentially theme it to, to Gloomy Wood wouldn't have the entrance around the back uh, coming down from the rapids. Who knows what's going to happen with this one, but we'll be following it very closely. Uh, so I'm looking forward to both. I think, yeah, I'm going to be following Blackpool's just as much as I am Alton Towers' uh, with it being the local one. So yeah, both are going to be very exciting. I won't say which one I'm going to be following as much uh, because I think I'm going to follow them with both. And I, but I do think the Blackpool Coast will be the, the firmer, the better edition. So thanks for your question. James has asked, what is my favourite UK theme park and why? I think, James, I've literally just answered that question uh, in Tim's question just, but it is, it's Blackpool Pleasure Beach now. My favourite UK theme park, mainly because it has got some classic rides. It's got Valhalla, a brilliant dark ride, and even the big one. I know you have to take the mick out of the big one a bit and say it's a monorail, but it's still an iconic ride for the UK, and it's one of the biggest coasters we've got in the UK, and it's great to ride. You know, you get some nice views, and especially when the illuminations are on at the back end of the year, it's nice to go on and ride it. So, yeah, it's just a nice park, and I think they've done a lot of upgrades over the past few years to keep that classic heritage charm, but upgrade the park as well. Just little things like repainting Revolution, and Nickelodeon Land was a big refurb uh, to that whole Beaver Creek area. Yeah, it's just a lot nicer park now than it was a few years ago. So, yeah, thanks for your question, James. Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Dave has asked, what shows would I like to see return to Alton Towers? The Ice Show. I absolutely loved the Ice Show. I grew up with Alton Towers as a kid, and the Ice Show was, I loved it. Peter Rabbit on Ice, Webmaster, Circus of Illusions, uh, with the twins. Anybody remember the twins? Comment below, actually. I'd be interested to see how many of you actually saw uh, the Ice Show at Alton Towers. I absolutely loved it. It's a shame to see the downfall of entertainment at the park, really. The only shows now at Alton Towers is in CBeebies land. I mean, we don't even have the Pirate Show anymore. At least a few years ago, there was Pirates of Mutiny Bay. There was the wonderful world of Cloud Cuckoo Land, if anyone remembers that, which was in the Ice Age Theatre uh, in Cloud Cuckoo Land. So, yeah. 
yeah, you know, in terms of entertainment, there's not a lot of Alton Towers, so I'd like to see a, a fresh lease of life in terms of entertainment, but I don't think that's going to happen over the next couple of years, unfortunately. I don't think until the park gets back on its feet, they're going to start thinking about extra expenses such as entertainment. It's a shame, but that's just the way it works, I think, at the moment, unfortunately. Uh, well, thanks, Dave, for your question. I show for that one. Final question then is coming from James, uh, another James. If I could add any flat ride to Adventure Island, what would it be and why? So Adventure Island in the South End is a great park. It's tiny, but you can still spend the full day there because it's ram full of coasters, flat rides, a couple of good dark rides. Adventureville, I loved that. Uh, yeah, it's got some great stuff. Uh, a flat ride, I'd like to see something along the lines of a wind seeker slash that sort of tower ride maybe like a big drop tower or wind seeker i think would work well or maybe along the lines of uh pterodactyl flamingo land which is like the mini version of the the wind seeker uh yeah that sort of thing will work quite well there. i think you get a nice view looking over the pier over look at the whole of south end so yeah thank you very much for your question if you've got any questions you'd like to ask me i'll answer them here on the show all you need to do is send them in as a private message over on our facebook page just search theme park worldwide on facebook uh, and then drop us a like whilst you're there as well you'll see all our competitions live updates and so much more, including links to our regular YouTube videos. Not that much to get through then this week and interact with me, but we'll start off with Chris just here, who had a photo with me. So thank you for saying hi. And remember, if you do see me at the park or anyone else from Theme Park Worldwide, make sure you say hi, have a photo, and you can send it in to be here on Theme Park Worldwide, the show. Thanks, Chris. Uh, Richard's got a photo here on Megaphobia at Oakwood in Wales. I love Megaphobia, a brilliant wooden coaster that opened in 1996. What an absolutely awesome ride that really is. Celebrated 20 years last year, that one. Uh, what a brilliant, brilliant coaster. Uh, Jason's got a photo here with the Bubbleworks selection that he's got there. He's got a little Bubbleworks theme going on uh, in his own world of theme park. That looks absolutely awesome. I'd love to come and see that or see more photos. So send in some more pictures. We'll get them here on Theme Park Worldwide, the show. And it's great to see another Bubbleworks man has survived there. So thank you for sharing that one there, there James. Jason. Uh, James, another James, has got his photo of his merchandise collection. There we go. Thanks for sharing that one. Some really nice items there. And finally, a big happy birthday to Alexander. Thank you for watching Theme Park Worldwide and happy birthday to all of us here at the channel. That is all for this week's episode of the show. I hope you've enjoyed watching it as much as I have filming it. And of course, don't forget next week is a big one, the opening of Blackpool Pleasure Beach here in the UK and our first proper look at the construction uh, for the, the brand new Map Mega Coast. I mean, there's been quite a few little videos go online, a few fan sites have been inside now look at the new area. Unfortunately, I've not had a chance to go up there and see it yet uh, due to all the commitments, but I'm looking forward to getting in there next week for the first time, seeing what's going on in terms of the footers going in and all that kind of thing. I mean, looking at uh, some of the videos of things that have gone online recently, it looks like there's hardly even any access down to Burger King, Sky Skyforce, the big one. That whole area looks like literally it's been dug up at the moment. So let's see what happens next week when the park opens. I mean, surely they can't be working on, on the ride whilst people are standing in, in that area looking at it. Who knows what's going to happen? But uh, we'll soon find out. Thanks for watching Theme Park Worldwide as always. And of course, if you want to be kept up to date on all the latest videos, keep coming back every week in Theme Park Worldwide, the show, where we keep you up to date on all of our content here on the channel, along with the latest Theme Park news. I'm Sean Sandbrook. Thanks for watching. And that means it's time to cue those credits. Bye, guys. <laughs>